Hey, this is Yasuke Wolf, and since in our last video we talked about VR with Nihongo Gamer, I figured for this video I'll do a kind of a follow-up and talk about my 10 favorite, uh, 10 games in VR that I really enjoyed playing. 10 games in no particular order, so it's not like a top 10 list going counting up to number one or anything like that. These are just 10 games that I found in my library that I really enjoyed and I'd like to recommend to you, particularly if you have an HTC Vive. So the first game on our list is Counter Fight. Now let's see me simply play this real quick. There you go. So Counter Fight is a really um, addictive game. It's super simple, but you're basically a virtual reality ramen chef. So you have all their customers coming in, and you have to and you have to make ramen for them one by one. And they each have different orders. And sometimes sometimes they want beer, or they want uh, like I think I think you could also make yeah gyoza. There you go, gyoza. It's like a dumpling. And so you, you watch the characters come in and you, you, make their, you make their food and you put it on the table and you get money and the, depending on how much money you get, you get a high score. There's either like a five minute challenge or you could do like an uh, endless run. Um, very addictive game, lots of fun, and it feels just really awesome when you're in the zone and you could just like see see the orders and be like, okay, like a, um, what do you call it, like a uh, egg ramen, and you, you like make it in like two seconds and you throw it out there and you make the next one, and it's one by one, you're making all the ramen, and you just, you get into this like zone. Oh, I forgot, robbers come in, and when the robbers, whenever the robber comes in, you have to throw something at them. It could be anything, like you could just like, if you have like a, a a bottle in your hand, you could throw the bottle at them, or if you have like, um, if you have like a, a ramen that you're not going to use, you can just throw the whole, th throw the ramen at them, whatever, and then just get them to run away. But the only the only like uh, thing I would say as a caveat for it is I wish that there was a little bit more of a progression. Um, it, it right now it's just basically uh, it's basically just um, you know a high score challenge to see who could hit, get the highest score and put your name on on the list of of, of people um, probably. And um, I don't remember if it actually could categorize uh, people from your friends list on Steam or if it's just a, a general everyone who's played the game. I think it might just be everyone who's played the game. So if there was some more progression in the future, that would be nice. Also, another thing to note is that Counterfight, there's two versions of it. This is the uh, ramen version. There's also like a samurai, uh, a samurai version of Counterfight. Uh, let me see if I can find that real quick. It's uh, serious. Yes, it's the samurai edition, and in this one, you're um, a sushi chef in like ancient um, Ed Edo period Japan. And this one, the theme is really great, and it, it, they actually expanded the things you can make. So I really like that they're expanding things, but I don't, I didn't enjoy it as much when I played it, just because um, it's something strange about how they changed the way that you hold your your chopsticks. So in the uh, in um, the uh, the ramen shop one, you don't have to actually hold a button to keep the, the, the chopsticks in your hand. While in this one, I believe you did. And it would throw me off all the time because I'm used to just having the chopsticks always be in my hand. And so I'll be dropping the chopsticks without paying attention. It's just a weird like UI thing that just made it a little bit di more difficult for me to play. Where I feel like the UI was a lot smoother in the last version. But you now this one it does add new items to the list and it also has an interesting theme. So if you have the extra funds for it, you might want to check that out. They're pretty cheap when they're on sale. I think I got it for like a, uh, like ten bucks or something. Oh yeah, so it's actually. Uh, 980 yen, which is about $10, just regular price. So you could probably get it on sale for like five bucks or even cheaper. So let's look at the next one on our list. Now this, the next one is called uh, Vanishing Realms. And um, this game is a pretty old game. It, it, it was, it's uh, one of the probably original titles that was uh, with the launch of, of uh, HTC Vive. It was in the kind of the first batch of games that came out. So many of you may already know about it, but if you don't know about it, you should try it because it's till this day it's still the best sort of like fantasy RPG game that I've played in VR. A lot of games kind of try to do fantasy, but it's more like just a what do you call um uh, like a wave a wave battle thing where you have enemies come and you kill them the next enemies come in and it's just like one pattern to the whole thing whereas this it actually has a storyline and you're actually traveling around and it's really cool how the game progresses too because you start out um, 
with basically nothing. I, I, I believe, yeah, I think you do start with nothing. And you're, you're like traveling through this dungeon and then you like solve some little puzzles to open doors and stuff. And then slow, gradually you start finding like, you find like a sword and then you find like, you start learning how to use the sword and then you kill you kill a couple monsters and then you get like a shield and then you get used to that. And then next thing you, you find like, um, you find a, a bow and arrow and like, okay, now I can use bow and arrows too. And then next thing you might find like, um, uh, after you find the bow and arrow, I think there was actually a magic wand. So then you can start shooting, like shooting fireballs and stuff. And, and it's cool because they don't just give you everything at the beginning. It, 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 it gives you bit by bit. So you get used to one thing and then they, they go like, okay, now you're used to that. Now let's give you one more thing. And there's, and all the while you're, you're traveling through this kind of like landscape. It's, it's a fairly short game. I beat, I think I beat it in four hours. Yeah. It looks like I beat it in four and a half hours, but, um, uh, you, there is some replayability, so if I wanted to go back, I could play again. Um, but I mean, in general, VR games are generally going to be pretty short for the most part. I think the the last counterfeit one is basically just the one little five minute challenge thing, and just you play that over and over again. So, in terms of uh, of VR games, a four and a half hour long camp like campaign is actually pretty pretty good. A lot of a lot of VR games don't last that long to 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 beat. So if you haven't played that, you definitely should. It has really good combat, really good like um like puzzle solving and, and like a nice ambiance for the, the environments that you're in. It's the best RPG that I played in VR to this date. So next on our list um, is a more recent title, but uh, kind of similar in vain that you have actual sort of like a campaign that you walk through. And that is Bethesda's Doom VFR. I'm still not sure what the F stands for, but I, we could take, we could take some guesses. Uh, I have to put my, my, my age. Uh, let's just uh, pretend like I was born on uh, Halloween in, uh, I don't know, 1975. 57. No, that's too young. That's too old. Uh, 1969. There we go. Sorry for that. Okay. So, Doom VFR. I've been, I've been playing this recently, and it's... It, I had some issues at first with the uh, with the UI. I don't. I'm still not sure if it's the game or if it was my controller. But um, you see how there's like these like quick like teleport moment. Um, like what do you call them? There's two. There's two basic types of motion you can play in it. You could teleport, which you, you throw out like a, a beam, and while you're throwing out that beam to like to shoot out to where you want to teleport, time slows, which I thought was great because um, the the last game, Vanishing Realms, it time doesn't slow, so it was really kind of annoying to, because you're fighting something, and you want to like you want to turn to run away, but the time it takes you to turn, they're already hitting you. Well, this one it kind of gives you that moment to like pause, turn, figure out where you want to move, and then let go, and then it and then you move, and it's time is slowed down. So so it's more manageable. So I really enjoyed that. Um, but also there's a, another mode of, tr of transportation where you uh, you press the direction and you kind of like, how do you describe it? It's like you zoom forward or zoom to the left. It's like it's like a strafe or like, um, like a, qu a very quick dash movement. There you go, dash. It's like a, you dash forward, dash backwards, dash to the left, dash right. And that seemed like it would be an awesome type of movement for these types of games. But for some reason, it just doesn't move quite the way I want it to. Like sometimes I'm pressing the button and it doesn't. I think what I think what the issue might be is that the way that the controls are set up is that the dash is you have like this pad on your on your vi on your virtual on your Vive stick, and the up down left right are the dashes, and then the middle is your teleport. So it's like. It's kind of weird because you could accidentally hit the middle when you actually wanted to dash, or you could accidentally dash when you wanted to hit the middle. So um, that's been kind of an issue for me. But once you get used to it, 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 it is really, really um, innovative. And it's probably um, the only game I've seen that, that kind of has those kind of dash movements. Um, and also with the, uh, with the teleport slowing down time, which I thought was really cool. Um, the game, in, in ter as far as the game itself, it's kind of a mixed bag for me. I do recommend it, but... Um, with a few caveats like I felt like there's a lot of kind of meaningless scenes of you just walking around to solve a puzzle um like I feel like like with, with Vanishing Realms it, it made sense for you to like walk around and solve puzzles because you're it's like a dungeon delving game but for Doom I feel like it's really should be about fighting off the hordes of demons from hell and the pacing for this just seemed kind of weird to me where like you would be just walking around like empty corridors and just trying to and it's not really even like solving a puzzle because it, it tells you what to do it's just like you have to walk for this area grab this thing and then walk to that area put that thing in that thing and then walk to this and there's like no fighting at in, in that whole time and then all of a sudden you open a door and it's like 
all right, now it's battle time. And there's like 50 like demons that come at you at once. And it's like this, like arena shooter thing. And I'm like, you know, I feel like it would have been a little bit better if you kind of paced it out where I was fighting like little demons on my way while I was walking from place to place. And then you had like a big boss battle instead of it being like absolutely nothing. And then all of a sudden like complete hell breaks loose, you know. But I mean, uh, and also it might also be better to just be able to play just the complete hell parts and, and skip out, skip the like walking and and putting an item in that thing. But um, I do, it does look like you can you can replay stages. So I, I believe that after I, after I unlock them all at the end, you, you should be able to go back and just play the the actual fighting parts by themselves without the without the walking. So that might solve that issue. Also, it has a lot of replayability because the this year I've played for about Sierra says I've only played that can't be right. Um, G-Conk. It looks like I've played for about four hours, so about the same about the same as um as a. Uh, Vanishing Realms, but I actually haven't beaten it yet. So I think that this actually probably might be slightly longer than Vanishing Realms. And it has replayability because the difficulty it has a number of difficulties and the higher difficulties are actually quite challenging. So I think that there is a merit to go back and try to challenge yourself more to do more difficult runs. But uh, moving right along, because I don't want to spend too much time on any of these, and this is not a full review. So if I ever get time to do full reviews, I might do it, but this is just kind of like your basic breakdowns. So the next one, and... This one is another super simple one that came out um, back in the day when Vive was already what was was just new on the block, but it's I highly recommend it. It's loads of fun and it's really challenging and a really good workout. H Hollow Point, and I think a lot of you that have Vive already know about this because I mean it's just one of the best games that came from the original batch of games that came out. But it's basically you're in the Matrix type of like dojo and you're doing Hunger Games type shooting arrows at holograms. And, um, you know, it's your basic, like, shoot for a high score type of thing. But the thing about this game is it just feels, you feel completely badass when you when you do it well. Because you're you're dodging things, you're doing, like, matrix moves to dodge, like, the enemy, the, the like, hollow, the, what do you call it, the hologram, like, bullets that are coming at you, and you're shooting things, like, left and right all over the place. And you look super cool doing it. Like, a lot of VR games, you look really stupid, but... Uh, I did this with a couple of my friends in the in the place, and they they all like think that you look so awesome when you're doing it, just because the way that your your body like moves from place to place and you're shooting things all over the place. It's I don't know, I, it's hard to describe. It just feels really awesome. It's super simple. I kind of wish there was a little bit more to it, and maybe there might be more expandable content sometime in the future, but or maybe a new version of the game. But for now, it's just a simple game, but it's loads of fun. And if you want to lose weight, this game will give you a serious workout. Um, it's still probably the, the, the most intense game I've played in VR, I think, in terms of, like, like completely wearing you out. <laughs> so, next one is um, another one from the original batch of games uh, that uh, I got when I first got my, um, my uh, VR. Now, why is this not coming out? Well, that's no good. Apparently, it's not coming up. Um, well, anyways, so... I'll come back to that one. So next one, this is all, uh, once again one of the original ones. But so this game is called Trickster VR, and um, the thing about this game is that it, it's, they've actually been adding a lot to this game over time. When I when I first played it, it was just like a wave shooter, you were you're just shooting waves of orcs that were coming at you. But they've added actually like stages and like branching paths and like different unlockables and and weapons. So it, the, the the developers of this, I think, really. Uh, um, are highly motivated and they're they're really putting putting their their efforts behind the game and putting out new new content very often so I do rec I do recommend this I think there's a lot of, there's a lot of heart behind it and it's it's probably one of the best wave shooters I've played like I really like the wave shooting aspect of it and also I like the the stages are really nice too the only complaint I have is that sometimes enemies will come from behind you and the sound design isn't quite so well that you can tell that they're behind you. So a lot of times you'll find like you'll hear like orc grunting sounds and you don't know where it's coming from. And then all of a sudden you're getting hit from behind. So I kind of wish that there was more of a clear this room, move on to the next room and you don't have to worry about what's coming from behind you type of thing. But that's just like a personal thing for me. Um, but oh, and also the voice acting um, is really great. Like they have like this kind of like Jarvis type of character that's talking to you while you're while you're fighting. It's really entertaining. Uh, so yep, highly recommend that one. 
the overall presentation is really nice with so next up is the solos project the Solus project i'm not sure how to pronounce it but this is an, um, a game that was is it's a vr port so it's not originally for vr but um the great thing about a lot of vr ports is that they have loads of content so uh, I've played this for about four hours, and I'm nowhere even close to, to, to beating it. There's still loads of content uh, left to play. Um, it's just very... It's kind of like if you like Myst, I think this would be a good game for you. You kind of crash land on an alien planet, and you just have to kind of figure out what is up with this planet, and can I survive on this planet? So you have to like gather like resources to... Um, to keep, you have to monitor like your... Um, your uh, calorie intake and your uh, make sure you're getting enough like water and and liquids and like stay stay warm. So you have to, it has that kind of survival element too, but then it's also just this mystery like, you're, of this planet of what there's a mystery behind this planet that you've landed on. You have to kind of uh, you have to solve it through various puzzles and like like just, like kind of like moving around and exploring. So it has has kind of like that mist uh, feel to it. We're just exploring this um this strange uh, landscape, but then it also has the survival elements as well. And in VR, like some of the parts of this, like when you're going into like the caverns and you hear like 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 alien voice, alien like um, noises or like like a little creature comes out. Like I, I remember the first time there was actually like a a, a creature that moved. It like freaked me out <laughs> because you're, you're in VR in this in this cave and this li this little like creature like pops out and you don't know if it's like a if it's something trying to trying to attack you or if it's if it's just kind of like a like a squirrel a alien squirrel type thing. You don't know. It's just like Whoa, what is this thing? It's moving. You know. So that that's uh, also recommended. I I will say it's it's kind of slow pace. So if you want like a high high pace like. Uh, Doom type of shooting game. This is probably not for you, but if you don't mind that kind of like ambi uh, ambient type of uh, exploration type of uh, experience, then yes, highly recommended. So next up, this is another VR port, but a really good VR port. Hmm. Super hot for VR. I don't know how many of you know what super hot is, but uh, basically, time only moves when you move. So if you stay completely still. Time is completely still, and if you move really fast, time moves fast. Now, the thing that's really great about this, like you can see here, where there's you can see the bullet coming at him. In V in VR, you're like literally doing um, Matrix style movements to dodge these these bullets. And uh, there's another one where my friends were like were like. Um, I don't know how to describe it, but I was playing with a couple of my friends in the room, and they thought it was kind of cool the way that they saw my body like moving around when I was playing because. It, you, you, it looks like the Matrix. Like you're sitting there, and you're like, you don't even realize it because you're you're engrossed in your VR. But your friends are looking at you, and you're like, your uh, your upper torso is like moved back, like is like kind of tilted back, like way further than it usually than it usually would. And it just looks like you're doing some kind of like strange um, new age dance or something. <laughs> so uh, the the aspect of of dodging things in in like Matrix style is really cool. Plus the way that the Mechanic works with with uh, time only moving when you move. Um, it allows for really interesting things like you could throw an uh, item up into the air. You could like shoot someone and then like their you could catch their their weapon and then like hit the next person with their weapon or like throw something at that guy while while dodging this. It's it's and the other thing that's nice about it is that you pl you play the same the same scenario over and over again until you get it right. So what that ha what happens is that you get so used to these these things that are happening that you start to memorize it and then you start to actually like move like you are a complete super like badass character in like an action movie because you have all the movements down pat by the by the time that you've play gone through it a number of times so you're you're you already know what's coming and you're like dodging one thing to the to the to your left while catching something on your right while throwing that behind your back and catching it with your other hand and then slicing the guy's head off and like punching the guy in the stomach and then shooting this guy and like blocking the bullet with your with your uh, with your knife or whatever it's like there's just it, it feels really amazing when you do it right it's kind of a similar type of a halo a hollow point type of thing that i was describing earlier where when when you do when you're good at it it just it just makes you feel amazing so yeah super hot your vr and next one on, on our uh, list of um, what he calls them, uh, these are VR ports again. And um, originally I thought VR ports would be a bad a bad thing, but VR ports are really great because of how much content they offer usually, and because it's so open, it's not just exclusive to VR, but there's also PC players, so it allows um, 
more uh, potential for content to expand. But so this is Subnautica. Now this is another like alien, um, alien planet survival game. But in this one, instead of walking around the planet like you were in the Solus Project, you're uh, you're going, you're diving into the into the water because it's a it's an ocean planet. There's it's nothing but ocean, and you're diving into the water, like gathering um, gathering like supplies, like materials, like like salt or whatnot to like refine water and things, and um, and you also find like uh, alien fish to eat and whatnot. And you start building different like structures. I'm sorry, the uh, the talking on here is kind of distracting me. Let's see if they have one without talking. But, uh, I've played this for about five hours, it looks like, and, um, I am nowhere near, like, any, like, a fraction of the content. Like, there's so much, like, I, like just in that, in that preview video, there were so many creatures there that I hadn't seen yet, so, like, there is a lot to this, I think. It's it kind of has that sort of, like, don't starve type of appeal to the game, where it's, um, like, there's a lot there, but it's hard to, uh, to, to unlock everything, because you have to kind of, like, um, you have to learn about the environment and what's there, and it's not really spelled out for you. It's just a lot of exploration and and trial by error and trying to uh, trying to survive. So this is another really good one. Um, I want to try to find the game I was looking for earlier, but uh, I don't know why it's not coming up. I could probably find it from my library. So give me one second. Uh, maybe it's not for sale anymore. That would seriously suck if it's not for sale. Oh, or, or actually, oh, okay, I figured it out. So I think when I bought it, it was called Zen Blade, but it looks like they changed the name to Katana X. Yeah, this looks like it. Is this it? Wait, no, no, because it doesn't say that I own this, but it looks almost the exact same. Yeah, this looks pretty much the exact same, so... I'm pretty sure this is it. I'm. I, I guess they. They must have. Uh, they must have um, gotten rid of. Gotten rid of the original game and maybe re-released it as Katana X. I'm not sure. So, anyways, um, it looks the same. So I'm. I, I'm pretty sure this is it. But the game is the game that I played is uh, called Zen Blade. It looks like they may have re-released it as Katana X, and um, this is basically Fruit Ninja. But the thing is, where you're, you fruit, they throw fruit at you and you cut, cut it up with your swords. But the reason why I'm recommending this and not, like if you saw earlier, there actually is Fruit Ninja VR. I've played Fruit Ninja VR and I actually played Zen, Zen Blade as well. But the thing is that um, Fruit Ninja, it feels, I mean, it, it's all right. But the thing is that it doesn't have the realism that I felt that the Zen Blade had, where Zen Blade you actually had to align your your sword with the thing you're cutting. So you you if you hit with the side of the sword, it doesn't cut. It just knocks it out. It just knocks it out of the way. So like if there's a a bomb or something, you could you could just hit with the blunt of the sword and you can knock it away. Uh, and whereas if it's uh, something you want to cut, you have to actually align it. And it, it feels like it feels a lot more realistic to me. Whereas uh, Fruit Ninja, I felt like I could just flail my hands like haphazardly and as long as it went across the area where the where the uh, where the um, fruit was, it would cut through it, even if I was hitting with the blunt of the sword. And that and maybe that doesn't bother you. It was just a thing that kind of that kind of like irked me a little bit when I tried Fruit Ninja. So for me, the uh, Zen Blade or Katana X, as I believe it is now called, is a, was a much more um, realistic kind of experience where I felt like I had a actual katana in my hand. The only thing that was kind of a, a minus for me, which may not be anymore because it looks like they've released it, so maybe they've changed it, but uh, in uh, Fruit Ninja, you could use two swords at the same time, while in Zen Blade, you only could use one sword at a time. Um, maybe they've changed that. Uh, it looks like there's a picture here of two swords, so maybe in Katana X, you could use two swords, but uh, in Zen Blade, that you, couldn't, you weren't allowed to use two swords in the actual competitive uh, part of the game. And once again, it's just one thing, so one kind of challenge that you do over and over again, and... Uh, shoot for the high score. So, running out of time, I don't want to make this too long, so the very last one, I've saved my favorite for last, and that is Elite Dangerous. And I may actually have to, like, just do some videos explaining this game or something in the future and, like, doing an actual full-on review because there is just so much this game. So, I've played this for... I've played... Yeah, you've heard me in these last VR games. I was talking about five hours, seven hours, whatever. 
This game I've played 362 hours of the game. Like you can see right here, 362 hours. Like this, I've gotten a lot of enjoyment out of this game. And the reason for that is you could basically do anything in it. I, I wonder if I actually have my, my review of the game listed here. Uh, this is my friend's review. Great game, hours of, hours of content. Huh, I don't know if I could... So I actually I did a review. I don't see it here. It's probably in my, in my uh, Steam profile or something. But so you could... You have all of, like, the galaxy to explore. And it's, it makes you really appreciate, appreciate the galaxy. This game, like, may, gave me a new appre appreciation for space. Like, I go to the planetarium with my wife sometimes now. And, like, I just... I... I, I, I like before when I went to the planetarium, I would just hear things and I just be like, oh, OK, that's like that. That star is uh, 5000 light years away. The star is whatever. But it's just like numbers. But when you play this, you actually feel the ex the vastness of space. I went on a trip to the center of, of our galaxy and it, I, th I believe it was like 30. I think it was like 30,000 light years or something like that. And it, it literally took me like two weeks to get there. Like every day I would go home and I would like, I would be flying for like an hour or two. And then I, I was like plotting it, plotting it, it out, like how, how long it would take me to get there and to get back and make sure that I, that I would make it in time to like finish this, uh, the uh, quest that I had or the mission, I guess. And so one thing is there's exploration. So you could explore if you're into exploration. If you're into fighting, you could just fight. You could be a bounty hunter. You could go out and uh, and sh find pirates and like blow their ships to smithereens. Or you could uh, you could um, do the opposite and actually be the pirate and go out and try to steal steal supplies from people that you see that are that are like doing trade routes. Or you could be a trader. You could be the one that's doing the trade routes and and carrying things from place to place. And you could like uh, kind of plot out. And depending on how. Like, Depending on how like fanatical you want to be, you could you could go there. So, like you could just be like a just focus on fighting and the action and stuff. But if you want to be more um, meticulous about it, you could actually like do like the Excel documents and be like, okay, what's the best trade route to make the most amount of money in the in the in the shortest amount of time? And you could do all the, the meta gaming stuff. I don't really do that as much, but I mean, if you're into that, this game is full. You, there's plenty of potential for that. But um. The one thing I would say, though, is that it's a high learning curve. Um, it's not something you could just pick up and start playing. You really have to kind of listen to YouTube videos and kind of learn how it works because there's just so much to it. And it's, it doesn't hold your hand. It, it's You have the galaxy and you can be whatever you want. So it's not going to be like some storyline of like, oh, the aliens are attacking. Go to this place and quick, like help the base. There's none of that. It's just, OK, you're in space. What do you want to do? So I think that's why you see the mixed reviews for this um, on Steam because a lot of people, they want to be told what to, what to do. They want it to be put out in front of them. And the other thing I should say too is like they also, maybe some people play this and you might think like, okay, I'm just going to fly this ship around and be, and be all badass right off the bat. No, it took me probably two to three days just to, just to figure out how to properly um, take off and land my, my ship without like crashing into things and blowing up so like it, it, it's kind of like it's it's a space game but it's also sort of like a flight simulator because it has the sort of like the intricacies of having to learn how to actually fly your uh, your spaceship and if that's something you're into you'll love it if you if you just want to like a joystick controller type thing where where you don't have to worry about like piloting um then or, like like landing gear and whatnot, then maybe it might not be for you. But for me, um, it, it's great. It's another type of th similar to like the the what I was talking about with Halo Point and like Zen Blade and stuff. Like when you pilot your ship and you pl pilot it well, it feels so great. Like the first time that I just like like flew out of out of the like here as you see I'm him docking here, and the first time that I was able to dock without any issues and I was just kind of like smoothly la like pull myself into the landing area and 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 land without any issues. I felt ecstatic. I felt like I had just beaten like um, a, a big boss in, in in Doom in Doom VR in Doom VR or something. And all I had done was just landed my ship in the la in the loading bay, you know. <laughs> but uh, you know that that it when you when you learn that and you you grow from that experience, you feel it feels really good. And I really gotta stop talking because we're running out of time, and I could probably talk about Elite Dangerous for hours on end. So that may be something I'll do in and future videos if people are interested in hearing about uh, 
the specifics of that game, but I, it's kind of a tricky thing. But I don't want this to be a complete like uh, let's play like uh, game game channel. I, I just still want to focus on the art stuff. But at any rate, um, uh, yeah, there there are also some nitpicks I have about Elite Dangerous that I could also go into, but it would take me. I, it would be another like half hour, hour or so of of, of me talking. Uh, just to suffice it that I say that I was a little disappointed with the uh, the PvP of the game because I felt like the actual like warring factions were because you, you could you could you could join a faction you could war against other factions but um, I felt like the actual way that the wars played out was a little too grindy for me. It, it wasn't about like fighting uh, fighting over like a borderline or something or it was more just about doing some task and doing it doing it better than the other person and getting more points and if you have more points then that that area was awarded to you so i didn't really like that system very well but anyways but besides that i think there's it's probably the, the game it's definitely the game i've played the most in in virtual reality oh one last thing before i go this is what makes this great about virtual reality if you get a hotus um flight stick with like a throttle and you put your 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 uh vive headset on it just feels like you're in a cockpit. It's it's it it's like such a one to one ratio where like you're you're holding the joystick in your hand and in virtual reality you're, there's there's your body with a joy with a like a flight a flight stick and a throttle and everything. So yeah, uh, just uh, I think these games where you're in um, where you're in cockpits are perfect for VR and I really want one of them. Last thing this so this is not another game. This is just something that I really want. Make Mech Warrior online or make a Mech Warrior game. For VR, I will buy it the second it's ready. Why do they, Why is there no Mech Warrior game for VR? I need to bu to be piloting a mech in a proper VR game, please. Okay, that's all I have to say. Till next time, Yoroshiku.